Well, let's get some more context on what Kevin Warren joining the Bears means. We've got Coach Dave Wanstead joining the show. Coach, what's your impression of Warren? What do you think about the Bears nabbing him as their new president and CEO? Well, I would use the term uh, layup, you know, in the terms of I, I think it was a, a great move by George McCaskey and Virginia McCaskey and the decision makers at the Bears uh, to bring Kevin on board uh, because of his background, his experience. And I think, that, you know, Kevin is here with his family, living in Chicago, working at the Big Ten office. I mean, the guy probably has to drive, you know, 10 more minutes down the road and he's at work at the Bears. So I, I think it's a good fit for both. And, you um, you know, it's, it's a lot of excitement. It, it kind of sends the message to, to Bears fans, and we all expected this to happen. But now I think the main reason for bringing Kevin on board is his expertise in stadiums, which he did at Minnesota. So I think it makes a lot of sense. With the Bears and the Dolphins, you worked with various team presidents. It makes me think of the scene in office space with the two Bobs, and they say, what do you actually do here? So what does right. a team president and CEO do, and why is that person so important within an NFL franchise? Well, I think in this case, and every organization is different, I will say that. In this case, I think he will be, a, he's usually a sounding board for the owner. Now, in a lot of cases, like when I was with the Dolphins, Wayne Huizenga, Eddie Jones was our president. And Wayne Huizenga was not there. He, he didn't even have an office in the building. Uh, so Eddie was kind of his uh, uh, troubleshooter. He, he was his eyes and ears in the building. He was the middleman. If you wanted to get to the owner, that's who you went through, uh, whether it was personnel, whether it was coaching, wh whatever the, the concern was, Eddie Jones was, was the man. Uh, he oversaw the cap. Didn't do any negotiating, but he kept the figures in order. So if the owner called up and says, where are we at with the cap? How much money we have left? That he was the guy that would, would be informed on that. Uh, you know, the only thing is, you know, he didn't have, he didn't hire me. He wasn't even around when I took, so he didn't have any, any, uh, when I, when I brought Rick Spielman down as kind of the GM personnel guy, he didn't have any influence on that one way or another. So he was more of the present with the owner, but he wasn't directly hands-on with the coach or hands-on with the personnel department. And that's what I'm really hoping that the structure is with the Bears. I hope we let Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus do their thing and uh, Kevin Warren stands, stays with the business side of it, working on the stadium. And related to that, I want to get your thoughts on the Bears having the top pick. And I know this is going to stun you, Coach. There's plenty of people on social media who wouldn't mind seeing the Bears trade Justin Fields and then take Bryce Young or someone else. What is your opinion? Is that just craziness? Well, I don't know what kind of player. I know that everybody tells me. And, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm all in with the Big Ten, working for them and doing everything. So, I don't watch Alabama play much, but people say Bryce Young is more accurate than Justin, that he gets the ball out quicker than Justin. Okay, let's give him credit for that. But I've seen Justin Fields move in the pocket, make short throws, make the big throws down the field. I know, and everybody in Chicago knows what we're getting with Justin Fields uh, from a standpoint of toughness, competitiveness, playing when you're hurt. Standing at those press conferences when we're all asking them those questions and you're getting teams getting beat and taking responsibility. So those intangible things we know. I don't know that about these other guys. You know, that's that's Ryan Poles and everybody's job to, to, to find that out. But I will tell you this. If you're defending a quarterback that has the run pass option ability, it's a lot tougher, a lot tougher from a defensive standpoint. It puts so much more stress and pressure on a defense. So I would say the old saying, you know what? You want to get rid of this player? Great. Now tell me who's going to take his place and make us better. That's what we have to answer. And, and if people, and then what are we going to get for him? Right now we're sitting there 
and we're going to get a lot of picks, and we have a lot of needs. We all know the needs. But if you want to trade Justin Fields, what's someone willing? If you say that you want to trade them, if I'm on the other side, the first thing I'm asking, Mike, uh-oh, what's, what are they, they know more about them than I do. What's missing? What's the problem here? So that probably means you're not going to get the value. So now are you going to get rid of Justin Fields and take Bryce Young and get a lot less value? Uh, you know, go ahead. I mean, that, if that's the decision, good luck. But I, I, I would have to study Bryce Young and I would have to meet him. And I don't know his personality and his temperament and everything because this is a tough town. And you better be a tough guy if you're going to be the quarterback in the face of the franchise. I do know that. Makes perfect sense, Coach. Thanks so much for joining us. Always great to talk to you. Okay, Mike. Be safe. Bye-bye.